Hi everyone, it's Alexi Uzas here. Today I have Luke and Aaron Saliba with me. Luke, Aaron, how are you going? Good, good. good. Thank you. That's the way. Uh, so Luke and Aaron are the producers of an upcoming feature film, Paper Champions, and they have a very uh, interesting story. They were able to raise a significant amount of private equity from their local community um, to make their first feature film, which is now in the final stages of post-production uh, and it's going to be released later this year. So, guys, very excited to talk to you again. We can't wait to, to delve into it deeper. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so uh, first we're going to talk about where you guys were at before we started working together because Paper Champions is actually based on a short film that uh, you guys made. So why don't you tell us kind of where you were at before we met? Yeah, um, well, we did a short film in, was it 2017? 16, 17, something like that. And, um, you know, I, I wrote the story and we shot it and we put it out there to festivals and, and it did, you know, it did quite well and um, people people really, really liked the, the lead character. So... Um, I got together with another another couple of writers and we wrote the feature film and um, I don't like there was we never intended to make it so quickly but I guess um, you know we just kind of set our minds to it and, and said let's let's find a way to make this film and um, yeah the, the process kind of started off that I think we we looked into into different funding options and um, realized that we needed a, a distributor for it. So I think that's where we first got in contact. We contacted you about distribution through Exile and, um, yeah, you. I think you read it and wanted to come on board as, as a producer and then you kind of helped us get it, get it up and running. For sure, yeah, yeah. I was uh, very excited once I read the script. I was like, forget distribution. I want to, uh, I want to jump on board. <laughs> but yeah, at the time, uh, so yeah, I was living in New York. You guys were obviously back in Australia. Uh, I do remember our first meetings were um, from our respective beds, uh, yeah. given the time difference, uh, which is a <laughs> great way to start the relationship. Um, but uh, before delving into like, yeah, how we kicked it off, I guess, Luke, let's go back a step. So what was it about the character or the short film that made you confident enough to be like, okay, I think I can expand this out into a feature? Um, yeah, and, and give us a bit of a um, breakdown about that writing process. Well, I think for, for me, it was more, you know, we wrote a comedy that was really character based. Um, and, you know, we had the two lead characters, Ray and, and Wade, who were this like, you know, Ray's, Ray's this really closed off guy and then Wade's this big bubbly Polynesian guy. And, and you know, in a, in a 15 minute short film, it was really hard to explore all of the characters. And, and then there were so many other characters that came into Ray's life and, situations that Ray and Wade kind of got themselves in. So um, then kind of going off and writing a feature was so much more enjoyable because we could explore the other characters and the relationships. And, yeah, it just became a bigger, you know, like we could really tell the story a lot better, whereas I think in the, the short film we tried to fit a lot in in 50 minutes. And, mm. and I think it, it without us knowing, I think what – happened organically through the short film was we kind of ended up making a like a, a proof of concept for the feature film mm. yeah which really helped us with the funding and and the rest of the process is that we had this short film to to kind of show people as you know this is the style we're going for and yeah and i think also mixing the two different types of comedy you've got that australian sense of humor and then you've got that new zealand sense of humor and putting them mm. both together which hadn't really been done. So um, I think that was exciting, like mixing both those characters together and exploring it further. Yeah. And you cast the same uh, actor for Wade that you used in the short film. That's right. 
Yeah, yeah. So John Tui, we um, contacted for the short film, just kind of out of nowhere. We were like, oh, you know, this guy, he, he, you know, we didn't know much about John Tui when we first contacted him and we kind of just cast him because he was perfect for the character and, um, you know, he kind of came down on a whim and was like, I'm going to fly, these guys are flying me down to Australia to, to shoot a short film, you know, uh, let's, um, I, he really wanted to do more comedy in his mm-hmm. own career, so I think he was really excited to just kind of come down and, and have have a bit of a play and have fun with it. And then that started um, a really good friendship and relationship yeah, with John. John really loved, I think, working on the short, short film, and I think he he'd come off a few you know American like big Hollywood kind of sets, and I think he was excited to to come to Australia and. You know, that culture, that Australian New Zealand culture is very similar in that way that we're kind of, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. So I think he really enjoyed the his experience on the short. And, and when we spoke to him about, because he was, you know, I think when we were making the short film, he was throwing all these ideas out. Like we'd get together and throw these ideas of, you know, Ray and Way going on these adventures and it would make a great feature. So then... When he left and, and I kind of said to him, you know, I'm going to start writing this as a feature, he he was excited about it, but I don't think he expected it to happen so fast as well. So then when we kind of got back in contact with him about the feature, he was, yeah, he was super keen and super excited to, to come back and do it all again. Awesome. So, yeah, so how did you guys come to learn about um, myself and Exile? I guess it was, yeah, when we were in those stages where we had the script finalised and we'd, we'd kind of refined it down and we were like, okay, now what? And after reading a few um, bits and pieces and learning that we need distribution and, and yeah, we, we found mm. you via, I think it was mutual. I think through, yeah, Damien and um, West of Sunshine and and that kind of stuff. And we, we, looked, we looked into that and we, you know, had a look around to see who was behind that and who produced it and... Um, yeah, we contacted you through yeah through kind of like mutual friends, people that have worked with you before, and yeah, cool. So before, like originally for distribution. Yeah, yeah. And so um, the process of us getting started, and and I guess going from hey, here's a script that you guys have written, and obviously I was excited about to okay, how are we going to turn this into a feature film? And obviously the first thing that we had to do was try and raise some finance for the project. Mm -hmm. So do you want to tell us, um, because you'd already done a bit of groundwork, you know, before we'd even met, and this was one thing that, you know, was really encouraging for me to see. It was not just that you were coming at this with, you know, a script and the creative ideas, but you'd already had a bit of an idea about who who would who you would approach for financing so do you want to take us through then how we developed that kind of finance strategy and then how you went about financing the film yeah so when we um first were like okay let's do this and we were you know searching for different avenues of how to do it you know crowdfunding is one option but sometimes you don't get as much as you'd hoped for and there's all the other bits and pieces with that and Obviously, being a feature, we needed a little bit more than what we did for the short film. Mm. Um, And so we spoke with a really good friend of ours who knew a lot of people in Geelong that cared about the arts and creativity within Geelong and new opportunities for the next generation. Which Um, I think from the beginning, we we, we we planned to shoot it all here and really wanted to, you know, use Geelong as the backdrop for the film. So that was important to us that our investors and the people that were funding this film, putting money into it, cared about our town and they weren't just giving us money for the sake of it. So that was a huge thing for us. And I think setting out and going, okay, we want people that live in Geelong, that care about Geelong and also care about new opportunities and and the arts within Geelong. Um, And so we met with our friend who had quite a few contacts and um, so it just initially started that we, um, you know, he came to us and he said, you guys need to put together a business, like a, a memorandum just to, you know, show who you're hoping to cast in it, even if that wasn't what, what was going to happen. It was just, you know, the, you know, breakdown of the characters, breakdown of the crew we'd already got. So I think at that time we already had um, a cinematographer, there was us um, and a few other people. And so we had, you know, a breakdown of who was already a part of the project, who we were hoping to cast, um, just a bit of a forecast of where we were hoping to go with the film, what we wanted to do with it, just kind of painting the picture. And we're not just turning up, you know, at meetings with 
people saying, we want to make a film, we need money. It's like, you know, we've done the groundwork, we've shown you where we want to put the money into, how much we're going to need um, and how it's going to be spent. And I think that puts a lot of confidence in people because they're like, oh, okay, cool, this isn't just a off the whim thing. This is like a serious kind of, you know, you're taking this seriously. So I think that really intrigues people. So initially um, our friend Tim, he would go and have meetings with people, tell them about us, hand over the business memorandum. They would have a think about it get back to him and then they'd set up a meeting with us. So it was kind of nice to have someone go in before us um, and just, you know, be, I guess, a character reference mm. for the both of us. Um, but then Tim and who he is, a lot of these people really respect him as well and his, um, you know, opinions of things. So, you know, for him to come forward and then to, to speak for us and then for us to finally meet these people. And I think once we met the investors, they were kind of like, ah, oh, just some young people that, you know, want to do something for the town and it's bigger than just... We want to make a film and make money. It's about the long term of this project. Like what what more is it going to do for our community? What more will it do for, I guess, our careers and, and all the people who are a part of it as well, including our investors? So I think in the end we almost emailed and spoke with upwards of 50, 60 people in the mm. end and we ended up with five investors and some of those came along really last minute, um, which was exciting and scary at the same time. Um, but... Yeah, I think it was just making sure that we had people to go before us, kind of like a middleman, um, which makes it a lot easier to get in with meetings with people and a lot easier to approach people because sometimes you're just speaking with personal assistants or you're speaking with people who are so busy they don't even have time to, to sit down and have a meeting about something like this. And, and I think sometimes people put their guards up straight away when they're like, oh, film investment, like <laughs> that's a bit scary, like I might not make any money back or um, you know, which I think speaks volumes of our investors that they believe enough in us and what we're doing to um, to, to want to get behind this. Mm. And I think it's that taking yourself, like taking the film even out of the equation, be like people who want to invest in your film actually want to invest in you and what you're doing mm. and, and how it's going to affect the the greater community of, of where, where you have it. So that was a big sticking point. I think that us. was like the biggest thing for us was they wanted to invest in us and, you know, a film industry here and, yeah, it, I think that's important when looking for investors. Mm. Instead of just finding people that... Throw money at you. Yeah, that <laughs> want to make money or... Yeah, especially yeah. starting out. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's, it's about more than just trying to find people with money, right? There needs to be another reason for them to invest because film is so high risk that there are so many other investments and places they could put their money in before film. So having that additional, like, hook or... You know, something for them to believe in the project, I think is so important in your case. Yeah, it was quite, you know, you'd kind of identified that pretty early on. I think that helped you guys a lot. So how much were you able to raise privately in the end? Privately in the end, it was close to half a million, so 500,000 almost. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then obviously you get um, rebates off the government for filming here and things like that. So that made our budget go up even further. So... Um, yeah, it was a hard slog. It took about eight months to get that funding and there were so many times we were like, are we going to do this? Is this going to happen? Or we need this more? Or, you know, the budget's changed now. And mm -hmm. I think that was a huge thing too. I mean, there were moments there when we had to have those discussions with our investors, which can be scary because you're talking with people double your age who've been in business for a long time and understand numbers and things like that. And, you know, you're coming back to them and being honest and saying, look, our budget's blown out more than we expected. But I think just actually being honest and open is a huge thing. And I think it was doing it with integrity. I think that's just a massive thing, especially when you're dealing with people and um, and money as well. It's just being open and saying, look, this has happened. This is a bit of a roadblock. And they were more than happy to help out and be like, oh, that's fine. Cool. We'll, we'll work it out. So it's like, you know, I think if you're not open about the struggles you're going through, even financially in the, in the starting stages of things, that can really trip you up. So I think because we were open and honest and we're like, well, this is what's happened, but then also bringing back to reasons why and saying, you know, the budget's changed a bit because of this or mm. we need a little bit more because of this and this is how much this costs and actually just showing why we need it. I think that just makes a lot more sense. Um, so, yeah, I think the money in the end that we raised, it blew us away and how fast it happened. Like eight months is not a long time to, mm. to raise that amount of money. Um, yeah, and some of that, you know, came in only a month before we started filming. So it's just... Mm, yeah. It's insane to to think about it like that. And you know there's a lot of people who've been trying to get films off the ground for a long time or get them greenlit and the money is the biggest stumbling block. So I think we were very lucky 
um, in the way that we went about it. And, um, yeah, I think just going into it with integrity and actually wanting to build relationships with our investors rather than just saying thanks for the money and, and leaving and not being open to everything or um, doing it above the table, I guess, is, you know, it's just being open and transparent. And I think that you gain a lot of respect for that because you're doing it the right way. So, um, yeah, I think that was a massive thing in the end for us. Mm. And yeah, how important was it for you guys to be going to those meetings like well prepared, you know, knowing how to pitch, having the um, investor deck or business memorandum that we put together, having even like the video that we put together, like all those materials, you know, to then go into a meeting and kind of feel confident about the creative, which obviously you guys can talk about passionately, but then having the kind of figures to back that up and show how you've come to you know, the potential return for these investors and being able to explain that, how important all, how important are those things in the equation? Well, I, do, like, I feel like having, having you on board was, you know, we felt like we could answer those questions and we felt like we were in, you know, in good hands because I think, like, I think that's the biggest thing is as creatives, we can go into a meeting and talk about the creative side of things mm. and that's what we're good at and that's what we're passionate about. But then when you get those those questions about money and, you know, return on investment and that kind of stuff, it can kind of stump you because... You're like, I've you never know, done this. The, these people, yeah, like these, most, if not all of our investors are, like they invest for a living. Like that's part of their, that's why they have the money they have. And for them, like these conversations are like second nature to them, whereas... For someone like us, we're going into there and we're just kind of like, oh, uh, <laughs> and you have to be confident. Like you have to be confident with your answers. And, and I think, you know, having the videos and having all of the spreadsheets that we kind of put together, yeah, we if we didn't have those, we yeah, we wouldn't have been able to answer the questions, which then I think would have made them not yeah. feel confident in us. And I think with your knowledge and, and yeah, being able to put together that stuff for us, um, made a huge difference like when we had a meeting and you put together a video even though you're in New York putting it together and, and just talking about the return on investment and how it's going to work and where the money's going and why they should invest mm. and, and things like that really helped start discussions for us and then to have it all on paper printed out in front of them as well to be like this is everything that we're, we're looking at um so I think yeah having and, your knowledge and, and we were honest like we were mm. honest from the beginning I think everything that we showed them they were the honest figures they mm. were the you know, we never said this is how well the film will do. You're going to make millions. It was yeah, we were all we were honest from the start, and and also going back to having the short film. I think being able to show them something also gets them excited because they get to see what they're investing in instead of just hearing about it mm. and seeing the quality the quality of of work that we've done. So mm. I think all all of it definitely helped. Work together. For sure. For sure. Cool. So that got us to having a financed film, but then you've got to actually make the film. And as you guys quickly found out, making a feature is a whole other beast compared to making a short <laughs> film. So do you want to run us through just your experience, you know, producing a first feature film? Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, any main kind of takeaways um, or lessons that you learned along the way? I think... The, the number one thing for us was we had we had a great team. Mm. Um, we hired the right people. We hired really hardworking, good people. So I think first stepping into it, I know that we were you know in the short film world, you can kind of you got to you got to wear multiple hats and you got to like do a bit of everything, and you can because it's a smaller project. Um, but then going into a feature film. I think at first is really daunting because you're like, oh damn, like this is this is a massive scale, and it's all riding on our shoulders, which I think is the first, what you think at the start until you start, you know, bringing people on board, and then you realise, cool, you know, everything's in in good hands, and and we just kind of got to help manage the project as opposed to doing everything. I I think I didn't realise how much we would be. Um you have to be so good at so many different things, which mm. is I think is something that you can't learn from something. You just have to do it. And once you do it, you're like, oh, okay, this is why this skill that I have is so important right now because, you know, you're going to different locations and you're liaising with the people there. And, you know, we didn't have a location manager, so we were kind of doing that as well. And 
um, you know, you're speaking with people there and then you're making sure that the times are correct and that we can bring everybody in and that, you know, um, alleviating any, any issues that they may have. And, you know, then you're looking at, you know, it's not even just the filming side of it. It's like accommodation. I think a couple months out, I was like, oh my goodness, like, what are we going to, where are we going to have everybody? Where's everyone going to stay? And, and Geelong only has very limited options for accommodation. So mm. um, it was great having um, Eve on board and, and helping us find, you know, different places we can do that. It's so like, that's just one thing in itself. And then it's like, okay, we've got to feed everybody. What are we going to do there? So, you know, finding another business to help us do that. And, um, you know, how are we going to go about breakfast? What are we going to do when, um, you know, it's raining? What's our other options for this? You know, when's the talent coming in? There's so many things. And I think having a great team and obviously you've got a lot of people in between all of those decisions and things that happen. But ultimately, at the end of the day, people are going to turn to you and be like, so what's that? What What are we doing? Mm. And you have to be confident and competent in your answer and know that, you know, this is the right thing to do. We're going to do this um, and and just see how it goes. So like, it's like, scary it, it, but exciting. It did. For us, it ran quite smoothly. Yeah. Like, you know, you have to problem solve and there were moments where we did have to make choices. Like Quickly. we did have to cut, <laughs> cut scenes or whatever. Um but we were things went pretty well for us, and you know we I, I think because we had a great team, we were trying to do a mammoth task in four weeks, and we could only pull that off with the team that we had and definitely I, and I think also another thing like being being there from day dot from that script being you know birthed into the world, I guess, and then having people give the notes to the point that it's at, and then going through all the meetings and getting all the money and meeting all the people and hiring everybody and then getting to filming it's like you're so attached to this project it's like it's like it is like a child yeah. um, and so it is doing what's best for it um, and and it is hard sometimes because you have to make tough decisions that you probably didn't think you were going to be making or you didn't want to make, but it kind of comes to you know push comes to shove and as much as um the quote, I hate it, but it's like time is money. And it is. It's like, you know, you've got to think about if you're going over time, what are you going to do? So you have to really, it's kind of like playing chess at the start of the day. If something's going wrong, it's like, you know, you all come together, you work out how it's going to work. And then at the end of the day, you're the one making the ultimate decision whether or not you're going to do that or not. So yeah, it's just being confident in your decision making and, and making sure that you're hearing everybody's thoughts and then just trying to make a well-rounded decision. So I think the decision making thing for me was a huge part of it. And obviously Luke was on set acting every day so a lot of the time I had a producer hat on um then we come back to the end of the day and we you know talk about everything so you know that in itself was difficult but both being in it as actors but then also being the producers so you know you walk a line there um you know one day you're in makeup and you're you're being you know pampered or whatever and then the next day it's like you're talking to makeup saying you've already got like this much time to get this done so it's so it's interesting and it, it was hard at times, but it was so, it was fun. It was fun and it was fun at the end because I think it just, yeah, created a well-rounded mm. experience for both of us. And how important do you think it was to actually be producers? You know, some um, filmmakers, whether they're writer-directors or writers, um, you know, sometimes just seek to attach a producer and hope the producer is going to go off and raise all the money for them and, you know, everything's going to go according to plan and they can just kind of focus on the creative. But for you guys, I mean, yeah, how important was it and even beneficial was it for you to actually be the producers and be the ones who were driving the project forward and being able to make those important decisions as well? Um, how do you think, yeah, that played out compared to if you had just kind of tried to offload the project to someone else? I think... Well, oh, well, do you want to go first? Well, I was just going to say, I think for us, like, I, personally... Um, I think when it's your project and you're producing your project, there's a lot more passion behind it. Mm. I know that all the choices we made were because we were passionate about making this film. And I think a lot of the obstacles we got through because we were so passionate about making the film and, you know, getting to that next step. Um, yeah, and I think, I was going to I think like, Having also with, you know, the finances, you, you're also, because we created these personal relationships with these people, we then felt responsible for the money and how we spent it, whereas mm. I think... If it wasn't yours, yeah. you'd just be like, oh, well, that's just another $300. But it's like, no, that's this person's other $300 and we've got to do it right and, you know, mm. make sure that we're, yeah, I think attaching, having the people a part of that makes a big difference. Mm. I think... 
for us as well, like to be the producers on this and to see it from from where it was to where it, where it got to, we get to set the culture. Like we get to say what is acceptable and what's not and how we will have a set and how we won't and, you know, mm. what, what behaviour we seem is like, you know. So like everyone ends up being a massive family at the end of it and um, I think because of that it's like people do want to go that extra mile for you because we're all working together as a team and it's it becomes just this big group of people that want to see the film have a really great result and so I think although there are stressful stressful days or things that don't go quite right and sometimes you know you're really tired everybody's tired but to have that good morale to push everybody through and to have that culture where it's like you know we 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 set the standard and set the bar and like what what we're going to do here and and how hard we're going to work and still have fun at the same time like I think sometimes maybe if you give that to somebody else that it wouldn't be set the same so um, and I think that's what people walk away with ultimately at the, the end of the day is the cast and the crew and, and mm. you know, the people that we liaise with on, on locations and, you know, bringing our investors on set to come and watch for a day or two. It's like, you know, you can just feel that that difference because it's just this really accepting place and, um, yeah, just a whole lot of fun. So I think that's a major part of it was, yeah, feeling the responsibility to make sure that we were good stewards with the money and also feeling like, you know, we're going to create this culture that's fun and accepting and safe environment for people to be a part of. And I think hopefully the team that we had felt, um, you know, confident in the leaders they had mm. because of the culture that we set. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I remember being in New York and seeing the photos from set and the videos from set from set and I was just like oh my god this is like the worst movie to miss out on being on set because it looked like so much fun you know Um, and obviously you guys are working hard because it's a low budget feature film right it's not all luxury so you know I knew that you would be putting in the hours and working hard but at the same time it looked like such a fun workplace and such a fun environment to be in um and you know even hearing stories of how the crew bonded and yeah i think that that is a real testament to you guys because that culture does come from the top right and they are looking to you guys um to to kind of set that culture and you know i think that you do get more out of, it, out of a team um, by having the right culture yeah. absolutely um yeah we're just very lucky very lucky with the people that we had and you know now um there's people who are working together on other projects and doing other things together all because of that friendship that was created on set at Paper Champions and, you know, that opens up more opportunities for people to be a part of things and to, um, yeah, feel like, I know, they've got more of a network now as well. So it's, sorry, Luke's just plugging in the computer. (laughs) Um, Yeah, we're very lucky, very lucky. Cool. And let's talk about where you're at with the project now. So you're in the final stages of post. And let's talk about, you know, how things are different for you now. So you've been through this, you know, um, enormous project and you've come away with all these lessons and this experience. And so how do you feel like that is now, um, you know, changed your life or changed your career even um, and kind of what's next for you guys? See, we, we now live in a mansion on <laughs> Beverly Hills. Um, so. <laughs> uh, just making it rain, right? Yeah. Um, yeah I was a bit too long. long. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting now to have, to have a, an almost finished project and, um, Again, like having a great team that we can then move on to the next thing after this and I guess bring on. Uh, we've got a lot more experience now and, um, you know, we've learnt a lot from this process. Mm. We've learnt a lot from, the, the yeah, the whole the whole process from beginning to end and, um, yeah, we're really excited to to kind of move on to the next one and and hopefully keep keep making stuff and keep it, keep the team going. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like having that, yeah, the experience and living through it, like it's one thing to learn about it and to be like, oh, that's cool, let's do it. I think like really both of us jumping in and being like, we've never done this before, but we're just going to do it. But I think it sounded very daunting at the start, 
But I think looking back now, if I told myself where we're at, I'd be like, well, I don't know if I don't know if we could do that. But I think because you take it step by step mm. and then having the right people come in at all those different steps and points in time, that's when it just keeps building up. So I think it's it's not rushing things just because you want to get it done and not rushing it because you're just like, I need to make a movie so that I have a name for myself. It's not even about that. It's about going slowly, doing it the right way, doing it properly and doing it with excellence. So you're not ending up with a project at the end of the day that's not as good as it could have been because you probably didn't put in as much work and effort at all those other steps. Mm. Um, so I think we've really learned like, yeah, definitely sticking to your guns and decisions that, that you want to make, but then also being flexible in the same sort of a way as well. And, and things aren't always going to go the way that you planned and things are going to blow out. And it's kind of like a house renovation. They're always like, you can have a budget, but you're not going to stick to it. Or, you know, you can have a timeline, but it may not be stuck to. And it's just the way that it is. I mean, when you're working with multiple groups of people, things are going to change. And I think mm. you have to be, I've learned you have to be really open and adaptable to that and be okay with that, that things are going to change or dates are going to get pushed back or things might go a little bit longer than you expected or you may not be able to have a certain thing that you really wanted, but then you just have to learn to adapt and you have to learn to go, okay, what are we going to do then or how are we going to problem solve this? So I think for both of us, we've really learned that this producing side of it is something that we really enjoy. Like although we both do acting, I think that we've kind of gone off. Oh, I think mm. we love this, like the producing side of it. It's been really interesting and fascinating. And, and, yeah, I guess to have that stronghold in a team and be able to um, be that point of, of, you know, support and help for other people and then pushing it along at the same time, I think that's something that we both really enjoyed and doing it together. I think at the start mm. we're like, we don't know if doing this as a couple is a really good idea, but I think because we both have strengths in very different areas, it makes it so much easier to work together um, but then we both see eye to eye on a lot of the creative things too. So that and I think I think we've I think that's something that we've learned is sticking to your strengths. Like I think you had obviously your strengths, we had our separate strengths. And I think if we tried to do all of the business and financing side of it ourselves, <laughs> we wouldn't have a film. Yeah, <laughs> like so, yeah, it was just so grateful to be able to have you on board and, and that finance side of it, and to have that knowledge of the business side of it, and. Um, yeah, and I mean, even that's fun now, learning all about that side mm. of it and, and, and how to have those conversations because a conversation with someone that's been in business for 20, 30 years is very different to having a conversation with someone about the creative aspects of a film. It's like it all works together, but they're two separate kind of ways of doing it. So, um, yeah, just learning the ins and outs of that and having all of your knowledge and helping us. And, and yeah, I think that's the thing too, like don't – it's okay to be out of your depth, but it's also okay to not know what you're doing. It's also okay to be like, hey, I'm just being honest here. Like I haven't done this before, so I really need your help. Or, mm. um, you know, that's probably a great question to, to um, steer towards Alexi because we're not too sure. So I just think being open and, and honest and um, yeah, and being able to be flexible, I think they're massive things that we've learned over this past year and a half of doing this. So, yeah. And I do feel like that next, you know, if you were to – have an idea for a feature tomorrow you know how less daunting is that for you now do you feel like that's something that you'd feel comfortable being like all right well i may not have the money right now but i know what the process is i know what the steps are and so that's something that you could like implement quite yeah. easily yeah definitely i think absolutely like we, we are working on like an idea at the moment like another feature which we want to do and i think when we do get to that the time where it is you know let's let's make this i think it'll be a lot easier because we know we know process. so many people too now and then at the same time like we you know you and i've been talking about this series that we want to do and and it's again it's like a whole nother learning mm -hmm. experience that because you know it's a whole different ball game t tv and um yeah so we're constantly learning and learning the processes and you know it's always going to be hard no one's just going to be like oh cool yeah here here's you know You've done it once before. Here's another two million dollars. <laughs> Go make it easy. something else. And we're finding that with with the series, it's you're trying to find a home for it and trying to get that off the ground is is difficult. So yeah, I think we, when we do another feature, it'll be yeah, we're looking forward to to doing it all over again and and obviously learning from some of the mistakes we may have made mm. this time and yeah, awesome. And what would your advice be to anyone considering um, working with me, uh, either, you know, on a hands-on capacity or through the program that I've set up? Do it. <laughs> um, I think just the knowledge that you have, Alexi, and how long or how many years you've spent really, you know, um, 
achieving that and obtaining it and knowing all the ins and outs and things like there's so much stuff we couldn't mm. answer or things that we really didn't know about I guess on the on uh, a business side of it and, and and knowing I guess a few legal things here and there and the finances like it was very hard for us to wrap our heads around but having you on board and being able to explain that to us in an easy way enough for what we needed to know meant that yes when we stepped into meetings we had an idea of what we were saying and when questions were given to us we're like ah I remember Alexi told us they might ask us about this and it's like yeah. I do have an answer for that or you know just having the 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 sheets you know mapped up for people um in our memorandum so that they could see where the budget was going and how that was going to work and um um, I think they're things that, I, you know, this was our first time being producers, but having you on board and you've done this before for the business and the finance side of that is, like, invaluable. Like, so 100% recommend working with yourself. And- I think also, like, the biggest thing for me was I think when you start out going down this this path, it's kind of – and it's like the same with acting. It's like you, you get this this – idea of that these people are really scary it's like oh you know i think when we reached out to you before we we're like really professional and <laughs> we, we were trying to be you know super professional and and all that kind of stuff but then i think once you get to know these people and once you work with these people i think what what we've realized is that we all get along and we all just have a laugh and i think you definitely help make it make us comfortable in the process. And I mean, ease that anxiety. You didn't, yeah, you didn't make it, you, you didn't try to, I don't know, like I just think you were very open and honest and you made the process fun and not so scary. Um, but, yeah, I think people who are going to work with you, they're in good hands. Absolutely. You know what you're talking about. We wouldn't have this film if we didn't have Mr. Ruzass on board. <laughs> <laughs> Same, same goes though, you know, it is that, it's that marriage between the creative and the commerce, you know, it really is. And I think if you can get that combination right, then, you know, like anything's achievable. Um, all right, guys, well, thank you for anyone watching this. Paper Champions, check it out. Comes out this year. Uh, it was really good to talk, guys, and we'll chat soon. Thanks, Alexi. Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye.